Hi everyone, I'm Kit Kat Wombat, and here on this channel we talk about all things Disney conservation, environmentalism, and sustainability. So if that's something that you think you'd be interested, feel free to subscribe. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Disney's 2030 environmental goals. I'll first be talking about the five different areas that the 2030 environmental goals encompass, and then at the end, I'll be giving my sharing some of my thoughts. On. Um, so stick around till the end of the video to find out what I think about these 2030 environmental goals. Now, the five areas that these goals focus on are emissions, water and ocean, waste, materials, and sustainable design. Disney first published these goals in a white paper that came out in December of 2020, and the reporting for their progress on these goals will start coming out in 2022 with the 2022 CSR report. So the first goal that I'm going to talk about is surrounding emissions. So their overall goal for emissions for 2030 is to have zero net emissions for their direct operations by 2030, and direct emphasizes just their scope one and scope two emissions and does not include their scope three emissions. Scope one is all of the emissions that come from their direct operations, such as coming directly out of their theme parks, their offices, their stores, their film sets. Scope two, on the other hand, are energy sources that are purchased elsewhere. So this can be power or electricity that's purchased from local public utilities, as well as fossil fuel purchases, such as with their cruise ships and with truck fleets and that kind of thing. Scope three emissions, on the other hand, include their indirect operations and include the entire life cycle of their products and services. So this is including the production of all of Disney licensed materials and products, as well as what happens to those materials and products after they leave Disney and are in the consumer's hands. So their goal for reaching this net zero carbon emissions for their scope one and two emissions by 2030 is to be done via focusing on zero carbon electricity sources such as solar and wind power where possible. And the goal is for 100% of Disney stores, theme parks, resorts, offices, film stages, broadcast studios, and data centers to be run by zero carbon em uh, emission electricity sources by 2030. And where their operations cannot support zero carbon emissions electricity sources yet, such as in their cruise lines and in trucks and buses and so forth, they are focusing on researching and supporting research and technologies to improve efficiency and develop new alternatives. In the meantime, to make up for these operations that are still consuming fossil fuels and producing carbon emissions, they are going to counteract this with natural climate solutions, which are also known as carbon credits. The next area that their 2030 goals focuses on is water and oceans. And this has two parts, localized watership stewardship strategies and sourcing sustainable seafood. So as you may know, a lot of Disney's operations happen in areas of the world where water is a concern, specifically in areas such as Southern California, where water is scarce and therefore localized watershed solutions need to be implemented in each of these places. Unfortunately, due to some changes with COVID-19, their original goals need to be changed. However, they are still committed to implementing localized goals and they included some examples of what these goals may be. And those are groundwater replenishment, water quality and access to clean water. The other part of water and ocean is sourcing sustainable seafood. Originally, their goal was to have 100% sustainably sourced seafood in all U.S. parks and resorts by 2022, but they did note that this rollout may be delayed slightly due to COVID-19, uh, but they are still trying to meet that goal by 2022. The guidelines they are going to use to determine what sustainable seafood is are the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch Program, as well as the Sustainable Fisheries Partnership. While those specific guidelines are only applicable in, US, in the US, their worldwide goals for sustainable seafood will be localized based on each area's individual needs. But they are going to emphasize 
encouraging fisheries and farms to use sustainable practices wherever possible. The next part of their 2030 goals is focused on waste. So their big goal for 2030 is that all wholly owned and operated parks and resorts will be zero waste to landfill by 2030. However, they did emphasize that this is wholly owned and operated parks and resorts, which means that this excludes the Asian theme parks such as Shanghai Disney, Hong Kong Disney, and Tokyo Disney, because these parks are not wholly owned and operated by Disney. And also, it is important to note that zero waste does not mean 100% zero waste. It actually just means that 90% of operational waste is diverted from landfill to other um, places like recycling and reusing and redu <laughs> reducing. In Disney's case, this also includes conversion of waste into thermal energy. To reduce their waste even more, their main focus is going to be on reducing food waste, which they've already been focusing on for quite a long time, especially in the U.S. theme parks. As for in the Asian theme parks, as well as corporate sites and, and cruise lines, while zero waste is not possible in these industries yet, they will fo be focusing on waste reduction, recycling, and donation where possible. In addition, they will have a focus on working with partners to research new ways to eliminate and reduce waste, as well as having an additional component of the program for educating cast members and guests about how to reduce their waste footprint. Now, I hope you're enjoying this video so far. I hope you've learned something. Let me know in the comments down below if you found anything particularly interesting so far, and make sure to give, you, give this video a like if you're enjoying it. Now let's move on to the fourth aspect of the 2030 environmental goals, which is materials. Now, if you did not already know, Disney is the largest licensor in the world. And so anything that has a Disney label on it, such as the shirt that was sold at Box Lunch, this is going to go into their goals. This is going to contribute to their goals for 2030. So this is a huge, huge undertaking. However, they have outlined goals for their materials, but not their emissions yet when it comes to all of their licensed materials. Their focus is going to be on materials that are consistently used in high volumes and in several categories, or products that are known to have significant environmental impacts. And so their focuses are going to be on forest products, which includes wood, paper, and palm oil, as well as plastics and textiles. Now the goals for each of these products varies, but each, but typically for the wood and forest products and the textiles, the goal is to have 100% recycled material or a sustainable alternative in the primary product and or the packaging by 2030. However, for plastics, the goal is lower <laughs> for recycled material. Um, however, they are implementing a hierarchy when it comes to plastic use to first seek alternatives before using plastic. Where alternatives to plastics are not available, the focus will be on reducing plastic use, then reusing plastic, and then recycling. And they are going to continue to implement removing single-use plastics in their parks, resorts, and cruise lines. Unfortunately, COVID kind of increased the need temporarily for single-use plastics. But and then by 2030, overall, their plastic goal is for all packaging and products to include at least 30% recycled or lower impact materials. And then their big, big goal is for, 20 th is for by 2030, all of their facilities that produce any kind of Disney intellectual property products will have a sustainable manufacturing certification. The fifth and final part of the 2030 environmental goals is focused on sustainable design. Now their goal is to increase inf efficiency in existing buildings and inf infrastructure, and that will be done by increasing energy management. And then during retrofits of these existing structures, they will be introducing high efficiency HVAC systems and lighting and so forth, as well as following all new construction requirements for any retrofits of existing buildings. Now for any new construction that they build, they are going to try to reach zero emissions 
However, they realized that in some areas this may not be possible due to the existing infrastructure in place. So their goal for new construction is near net zero emissions, as well as minimizing water consumption and having zero waste operations. They also note that they will continually evaluate the requirements of sustainable design and make changes when new technologies are available. So those are the five areas that they outlined in their 2030 environmental goals. I will note that specifically in the emissions area, they have a lot of room to grow. So they recognize that their fossil fuel use is still an issue. And while using carbon credits to counteract these fossil fuel emissions is good, it would be better if they weren't emitting those fossil fuel gases anyway in the first place. But unfortunately, as long as they are running their cruise ship operations and other truck and bus fleets, they are still going to be producing um, carbon emissions. The other aspect of carbon emissions that I wanted to emphasize is the fact that scope three emissions are not included in this goal at all. So I imagine this is a huge, huge portion of the company's overall footprint that is not being included in their goal for zero emissions by 2030. And it's not even being counteracted by their carbon credits yet. So yes, they have said that they will be evaluating what this footprint is and making new goals once they've evaluated that. But as long as they don't know what that number is yet, they can't be making taking steps towards mitigating these issues. I did also want to talk specifically about their materials. A lot of the goals for their materials were to have 100% or 30% recycled material, which is good, but then they add the caveat or more sustainable material or a less impact Full material and the guidelines that they use for what a sustainable material is can be kind of subjective. Other than that I think the goals for their waste reduction is really good. I think they were already doing pretty good with reducing their food wastes especially in Walt Disney World with their waste diversion um, projects and then as far as sustainable design is concerned, that's not really my expertise. And then with water and oceans, again, there wasn't a whole lot of information specifically about their water stewardship programs. So I can't really go much into that. Uh, however, with the sustainable seafood uh, initiatives, I think that the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch program is the biggest and most recognized program for sustainable seafood. So I think that's good for them to be aligned with those goals. And of course, recognizing that those goals aren't always possible in other parts of the world. Uh, of course, there's always room for improvement, and I think they're at a good start. But overall, I think there are still a lot of room for improvement. Now, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Again, feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content about Disney environmentalism. And I look forward to seeing you next time.